so uh, on capitalism, um, yeah. as a laissez-faire capitalist, how do you argue against political centrism? You know, it seems so reasonable to say, let's have a little bit of controls, let's have a little bit of freedom and mix them together. And, you know, you get some from one, and some from the other, and we get a balanced society. Oh, I see. So that's what you mean by political centrism. I could, I didn't understand what you meant by it, but you mean centrism. You mean n- neither here nor there, the mixed economy. Right. Um, I mean, the reality is that the most difficult arguments against capitalism are arguments from the mixed economy. That is, it's easy to debate socialists. It's easy to debate communists. It's much harder to debate um, the mixed economy people because their whole shtick is, well, first of all, look, we live in a mixed economy and life's pretty good. What are you complaining about? Yep. Second, um, second, you know, capitalism is great, it, but but it also has a, a problems. So we're just very, very good at calibrating it. And, uh, we, we, you know, we, 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 that's what we focus on, on calibrating, um, on where you allow, where it's good and where it's not, and, and where capitalism might not do as well. And uh, look, the results are pretty good um, uh, so far. I mean, I'd say, I, I mean, there are a few things about that. One is, the results could be so much better. God, the the lost opportunities, the lost wealth, the lost prosperity, the lost innovations, the loss of everything that we have. Um, it, it, so, um, uh, you, you know, it's that loss that uh, that is um, that is the main aspect of the mixed economy, and you can you, you know you can sense that loss partially in the differences between economies that are more free tend to be uh, closer to um, uh, uh, less of capitalism. And those that would be less free tend to, a mixture tends to be less. Now take, extrapolate that onwards and you can see kind of what the results uh, could be. Uh, so, uh, you know, if the economic principles, if they accept the economic principles that suggest that capitalism works best for tech, why doesn't it work better for healthcare and education? What is different about healthcare and education? Ultimately, nothing. And and you can argue from that. So that's kind of the practical economic argument that you'd have to make. But it, it is not easy. It is not easy. But I think the more interesting argument is is the philosophical uh, and uh, the the moral argument. That is, if we recognize that force hampers the human mind and restricts the ability of the mind uh, to function, then why even a little bit of force? Uh, why even why force in some areas? Those areas are going to be ones in which the mind is being restricted. Those areas are the ones in which uh, it's uh, you, you're going to get less innovation and, and less people thinking. And if it's bad uh, to restrict the mind, if it's uh, if, if that results in in bad outcomes, then, uh, it, you know, then why do it at all, right? Let's be consistent about it. Uh, and if, um, and then you have to make them all argument that if, if uh, self-interest is actually a good thing, good for the individual, and actually good for groups of individuals who are willing to pursue their self-interest and willing to use their reason in that pursuit, then by what criteria do you restrict the, the the ability of people to act in their own self-interest. To what extent do you uh, do you restrict that and constrain it and and make it limited? And so then you get into philosophical discussion about whether people ha- can take care of themselves, whether they can think, whether they can reason. Mm-hmm. Like every and point, right. say, yeah, most people can't reason. Therefore, we have to control them. We have to regulate. We have to tell them what they can buy and what they can't buy. The geniuses can reason, so we don't have to regulate them. That that's kind of his elitist uh, solution, which I think a lot of people have. Uh, but so the the moral argument is: if this is just, if this is right, if this is moral, then by by what criteria do you engage in immorality, un- injustice, and uh, and 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 something that is fundamentally anti-human, uh, even if it's just a little bit, still anti-human. Yeah. Yeah, 
I mean, to me, morally is, I, I, it might just be me, but it's the most potent category of, of argument. Because to me, to say, like, we have to prove it. It is, but it's almost bad. nobody engages in it, right? So nobody is willing to engage you with it. So, for example, when I do debates and I raise moral points, they brush them over immediately and go to the practical points. They do mm-hmm. they don't engage in morality because partially because they have no conception of morality, because their morality is conventional and they think, oh, what you're honest saying isn't even even morality, self-interest. That's clearly not morality. What's he talking about? They don't even know what I'm talking about. Uh, and and partially because they feel uncomfortable about morality because they don't actually say, yes, we have to constrain the individual. Yes, we have to subvert their self-interest. Yes, we have to act in these ways. Uh, it, the same with epistemology. If you bring up the epistemological point about uh, uh, central planning and you know better what's good for individuals and what's not, they don't want to engage in that because they don't want to come off as philosopher kings. They 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 want to become particularly the leftists. They they believe in egalitarianism, so they don't really believe in philosophy. So they don't know where to take it. So it's very difficult to engage people on the moral issue. It would be great if uh, uh, if it would be great if um, yeah. uh, we could engage. If if yeah. they would engage, they squirm out of it. They squirm out of it and go back to, but there's the study and, and that that's the most difficult debate to have because for every, you, you know, you have to know the studies, you have to be able to debunk them, or you have to say, well, the study is irrelevant and it's very difficult. You know, the last debate I did, he pulls out this metric, what is it, GDP per hour work to something like that in Sweden and they have better than the United States. And it's like, I really need to think about what this means and why this is nonsense, but uh, you, you do it on the fly. I've never thought about it. It's a, it's a measure. It's a new measure to me. So it, it's very difficult in those debates to 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 get the practical side and nail it. Gotcha. But he he refused to debate the moral side. He he just. He, but there is no private property. That's the only thing he would say, right? I think that's something that's so great about Rand is she she refuses to allow you to squirm out of the moral yes. argument. You know. Yeah. Yep. Yeah.